An attack by Israeli forces along the Gaza border today left two people dead and two others wounded, according to the Associated Press. Gaza's health ministry said one of those killed was a 17-year-old and the victims were unarmed. Israel called them suspected militants. Meanwhile, a civil society movement in the region is gaining steam. The boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign is promoted by Palestinian civil society as a nonviolent way to end the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories. Supporters of the campaign say they're having an impact both globally and inside Israel, where the government is cracking down on its own citizens' support for the campaign. FSRN's Melinda Tuhus was recently in the West Bank and Israel and files this report. Launched in 2005, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign aims to pressure Israel to end its occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip by conducting a Palestinian-led international effort to boycott companies that profit from the occupation. The coalition's strategies include pressuring pension funds to divest from such companies and encouraging artists and academics to boycott Israeli events and institutions. The campaign recently won a big victory after it targeted the French company Alstom, which helped build a light rail system bringing West Bank Israeli settlers into Jerusalem. Since the settlers are there illegally and Palestinians are not allowed to board the train, Alstom was an easy target, a company profiting from Israeli apartheid. Omar Barghouti is co-founder of the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Campaign, or BDS. Saudi Arabia excluded uh, Alstom from a contract worth $10 billion. That was our biggest one-shot success since the BDS movement started. Okay, it's not against an Israeli company, but who said Israel's economy depends on Israeli companies only? It's international corporations that are complicit in Israel's violations of international law and, and human rights that keeps, maintains Israel's occupation and apartheid. So that's not a less important target Hundreds of civil society groups have endorsed the BDS campaign, and Barghouti says there's also a role for Israelis to play. In the BDS call itself, it called upon conscientious Israelis to join the movement, which means that we're not excluding you from any future. The BDS call does not take a position on the future solution. One state, two states, we don't take a position. Israelis have answered that call with a corresponding movement of support called Boycott from Within, that works under the guidance of the BDS campaign's Palestinian leadership. Israeli Amir Turkel says, although only a small number of Israelis are involved, the government has responded harshly. Obviously, we're not the victims here, but it is important to talk about what what is actually happening right now to Israeli society and the Israeli government, which is a a very hard turn led by the government through many, many undemocratic measures restricting uh, speech for for the most part. I'm going to tell you now that I personally call upon you to, to boycott uh, settlement and settlement products. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's wrong, immoral, and damaging to Israel. I've just broken the law. The bill to prevent harm to the state of Israel by means of boycott was passed by the Knesset last year and is currently being appealed to the Israeli High Court of Justice. It calls for a fine of about $7,800, with no proof needed that any individual or business was harmed. At the Tel Aviv office of the Coalition of Women for Peace, Rona Moran is part of a team of Israeli women who research companies that invest in the occupation. They post their findings on a website called Who Profits, which has magnified the impact of the BDS campaign. Usually we work with um, uh, with the information that companies publish themselves on their websites, on on marketing uh, materials, in reports that they file for, for the state or for financial issues. Their annual reports is one of the best information sources there are. And some of it we ask from the state, from the Ministry of Defense, from, from different governmental or in, uh, companies and organizations. It depends. She says settlement products such as Ahava Cosmetics and Maya Foods are a tiny part of the activity they monitor. The involvement of Israeli companies and and the entire the Israeli economic system in the West Bank is massive. It's undeniable, and it involves banks and construction companies and 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 law firms and 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 every part of the of the Israeli market is there. Moran says Israel's strong reaction to the boycott, both abroad and at home, indicates that it is feeling the economic pressure. This is only the beginning. The, the more information that we'll have on this issue and 
the more com- successful campaigns that we will have, I believe that, that international companies will find it a lot more complicated to be involved in this kind of activity. As one indication of the challenges ahead, the Israeli High Court recently rejected a petition researched by Moran's group, charging that the extraction of natural resources in the occupied West Bank by 11 non-Palestinian companies is illegal. But the activists have more campaigns in the works. Among others, they're targeting another French company, Veolia, and the U.S. financial company, TIAA Kref. Melinda Tuhus, FSRN, in Tel Aviv, Israel, and Ramallah, the Occupied West Bank.